Hello, this is Ajahn Nisarano, um, and for those who don't know me, I am an Australian Buddhist monk who ordained with Ajahn Brahm 23 years ago. That's my full ordination. And for 14 of those years, I lived in Sri Lanka, almost 14, and uh, are now and I'm living in Newbury Buddhist Monastery which is outside Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. So this is where we are doing the recording from, from Newbury Buddhist Monastery. And so the format for this med guided meditation will be an introduction, followed by a guided meditation for about 45 or 50 minutes, and a sharing or a dedicating of merits. So the purpose of this uh, um, guided meditations, metta meditations that we are doing is to honour our teacher. And as many of you will know, Ajahn Brahm often mentions the Buddha's uh, advice or teaching in the Digi Nikaya, the long discourse of the Buddha, in the Parinibbana Sutta. He often he mentions that the best way to honour and or pay respects to a teacher is not through offering candles, incense and flowers, but rather through practice, through our practice, of what the Buddha taught us. In this case, the Buddha is talking about meditation, in particular the four focuses of mindfulness, to make uh, them an island for ourselves. And it's true for any teacher that they are <laughs> Whatever, whatever that we've learned from that teacher, by actually practicing that, that will uh, pay respects to them. They'll be very happy if we have developed, understood the teachings and are able to put them into practice. Whether they be a spiritual teacher or just, or not. So by practicing uh, the Noble Eightfold Path and what Ajahn Brahm has taught us, um, we can pay respects and give thanks for all his guidance and help and, and kindness over the years. And particularly by this offering of uh, guided metta meditations, loving kindness, friendliness, we can sometimes call it. And as you all know, one of the big teachings of Ajahn Brahm, you often hear it actually, is opening the door of, of the, our heart. And it's a quality that Ajahn Brahm emphasizes again and again. And it's one that uh, is very supportive for deeper meditation, for com overcoming the um, negative qualities in the mind. And so um, I'd like to use the theme for this, as I often do, <laughs> use a theme for the meditation of the uh, inner smile. And this inner smile is connects us with the qualities of uh, metta, of positive qualities like warmth, contentment, peace, ease and stillness, all related qualities, um, positive qualities. And one part of the reason for <laughs> doing this inner smile meditation is that, as many of you will know, Ajahn Brahm's first meditation teacher advised him to smile at himself in the mirror every morning when he got up. And, and as Ajahn Brahm mentions, he says, and his teacher said, if he couldn't manage a smile, then to use his two fingers <laughs> at the ed ed edges of the mouth to bring up a smile. And then Ajahn Brahm said, he practiced this for two years, quite amazing really. And he says, but this is why people say he smiles a lot, and certainly he does, <laughs> and what a smile. And I can say from my own experience, I've tried it, and I think it works very well, and I think it's something we can use, because even, you know, with the two-finger smile, as you could call it, it is so silly and so ridiculous when you look in the mirror and see that you can't help but smile or even laugh. But of course, one of the things I reflect, and I often mention this, is 
Why did Ajahn Brahm's first meditation teacher advise him to do this? I've never heard other meditation teachers recommend to the students about this smiling, smiling, getting up in the morning, looking in the mirror and smiling. And of course, it, what it naturally suggests to me, I don't know if Ajahn Brahm would agree, is that he was very serious. <laughs> At least his first teacher thought he was very serious and he needed to lighten up to, um, to bring more happiness and joy to his practice. And I know from seeing the video that uh, was made, they made a documentary about the Wat Pananchat, the, the monastery for foreign monks in Thailand where Ajahn Brahm lived before he became, came to Australia. They made this documentary called Blue Eyes and Saffron Robes. And it certainly he looks very serious in that. So if you want to check that out, of course, it's on YouTube. Blue Eyes in Saffron Robes. And also, as I mentioned, this and probably why his teacher recommended him to do this smiling, smile at himself in the morning is this joy and happiness, piti, piti sukha, are essential ingredients for meditation, particularly for deep meditations like the jhanas. It's what will take the mind inward, what will um, keep uh, keep the mind, develop the stillness that we need in deep meditation. And if our meditation isn't deepening, if we find that, that it's not uh, developing, going deeper, then it can often be this lack of joy and happiness in the mind. So we can try this inner smile meditation. And it's quite interesting that Ajahn Brahm said that the reason he ordained in the Thai tradition was because the monks at the Thai temple in London smiled a lot. And recently he said in a talk that they were kind, very kind, and it touched him. So this is what he, what he attributes to ordaining in the Thai tradition. And I think too, why did I ordain with Ajahn Brahm? And part of it would be because he smiles a lot. And it makes one feel, makes me feel more relaxed. And it builds up that sense of trust, doesn't it? And it also reduces fear and worry. So this is... Um, these qualities, uh, this inner quality of the inner smile, is very useful for us. And it reminded me of a teachings by Ayakima, actually, where she talked about often the things that we see, hear, smell, taste and touch trigger uh, negative emotions very easily. When we see something we don't like, when we hear something we don't like, when somebody does something we don't like, we read something, we see something on the email, on the internet, we tend to react to that trigger, as she would call it. And she used to say too, don't blame the trigger. It's just an external trigger, that's all it is. And our internal response need not be negative, need not be of the same nature as the trigger itself. And of course, it does also, it, uh, it also, for me, it brings up the fact that there are positive triggers <laughs> in our lives too, from what we see, hear, smell, taste and touch. And these bring up positive in mental states or positive emotions. And we know that from, you know, when we're in nature, if we're walk, going for a walk in the bush or in a uh, park, uh, being by a river or a stream, out by the sea, having panoramic views on a hill, sometimes listening to music, it uh, can bring up positive emotions that are peaceful and heading towards stillness. And um, so these things can uh, trigger positive emotions we can use in our practice. And of course, one of those visual uh, uh, stimuli or triggers we can use, and I, I think very useful in this way, is the Buddha statue. Because we see these Buddha statues, many people, non-Buddhists, find them very attractive. And you see them, often see them in gardens. And you can ask, well, why is that? And because they have a very pleasing, 
very peaceful appearance and it brings up a similar uh, emotion, can evoke a similar emotion in us. It can bring a sort of calming to the mind and bring a peace and a sense of acceptance. And with many of these uh, Buddha statues, we can see the one here, there is this warm inner smile that you can see on the Buddha statue. And that can bring up that feeling. We can connect with that feeling. It, we can, uh, it can evoke it, this feeling of contentment, happiness, satisfaction, steadiness, and safety and security. And I know one of my, when I was a layperson, <laughs> and I was in, uh, went to Paris, and I saw in one of the museums there, the Guimet Museum, uh, a Khmer, that's like from Cambodia, Buddha statue. I think from about a thousand AD, and it has the most beautiful uh, smile, inner smile. It's really radiant. It's almost like it's alive, and it's a very haunting smile. I still remember it even today. So we we can use these triggers like the Buddha statue, but also you know when we meet people, uh, often uh, sometimes. Uh, another person's smile can touch us and it can really lift our spirits, as they say. And it may even be a photo of a person So, and I, uh, that, that brings up this a heartwarming fo- uh, a smile that brings up this sense of warmth and happiness. And I know for myself, I often see photos of Ajahn Brahm especially the one on the recent coronavirus book, and it brings up this feeling of warmth, uh, happiness and contentment. And of course, as Ajahn Brahm, (laughs) uh, his first teacher mentioned, we can bring up a smile deliberately on the face. We need not use the two-finger method. (laughs) We can smile and we can see when we're doing it for ourselves, it can have an effect on the mind. It's not like we're trying to put on a happy face. So this is uh, ways that we can bring up these positive emotions. And when we develop them and maintain these positive emotions, this is a way we can let go of or avoid and let go of negative emotions, such as the five hindrances to meditation, to wisdom, to our daily life as well. And this is desire, ill will, drowsiness and dullness, restlessness and worry and doubt. And of course it's much easier to let go of negative emotional states before they've actually taken hold. So this development is a very, very useful uh, thing to to uh, practice. And of course it's the right effort of the Noble Eightfold Path. And this is the sixth factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. So we can use this inner smile, whether it be from the Buddha, from uh, someone we've met, uh, or from a photo, perhaps a photo of Ajahn Brahm, to bring up these positive emotions. And of course, with a, particularly with a Buddha statue, it's like a, we can recollect the qualities of the Buddha, the kindness, the compassion, the joy with others' happiness, and the equanimity. So we can use these positive medi- these positive feelings or emotions in our meditation by combining or fusing them with the meditation object, often the breath. This is the one I use a lot. And it makes the breath much more attractive. It makes it easy to stay with, because this is a problem many meditators experience. The breath is not exciting or attractive or interesting. And so to bring this interest to it is very helpful support. And of course, after a time, the automatic um, nature of cause and effect kicks in and the mind will start to develop this piti sukha naturally, automatically, leading to this sort of tranquility of the body and the mind leading to happiness, this uh, pleasant uh, quality in the mind, and then leading to one-pointedness or stillness. And uh, another support for 
for the meditation apart from using this positive emotion with the breath is also to locate the breath just to be gently aware of where we're most where we we can uh, experience the breath most and use it as a reference point not as not as something that we have to bring the attention to all the time but this can bring i find it brings more stability to the mind keeping in mind too that the it can change from meditation to meditation sometimes it'll be in the nose sometimes in the throat sometimes in the chest or the abdomen so this can just be a steadying factor for the meditation that i find myself find useful so now we can do the actual guided meditation of the inner smile so if you would like to first of all we can close our eyes and set up the body in a good way make sure it's comfortable whether we're sitting on a cushion on a chair or however we are meditating paying attention to how the body is now finding a sense of balance so the head's balanced over the shoulders and the shoulders over the hips feeling a sense of uh, balance and that it's a comfortable position and we can come into the present moment letting go of the past and the future freeing ourselves from the prisons of the past and the future of the way we've defined ourselves before and the way we will define ourselves by through the, in the future being free in the present moment just being happy to be here happy to have this opportunity to meditate together with the feeling there's nowhere else we'd rather be than just here just now And now we can relax the body mentally, bringing to our attention the head, the top of the head, the sides of the head, the back of the head. And bringing this kind, relaxing attention to these areas, soothing them, allowing them to relax. And now moving our attention to the forehead, around the eyes, the cheeks, and around the mouth and chin, soothing the face, allowing it to really relax. Letting go of any tension, strain, tightness. Now moving down to the neck, all around the neck, and giving the neck this gentle mental massage. And bringing to mind the right shoulder, starting at the neck and moving our attention slowly 
and gently and kindly along the right shoulder, allowing the tensions to dissolve, to relax. Now bringing to mind the right arm, starting at the top of the right arm and moving our attention slowly down all around the right arm to include the elbow, the wrist, hand and fingers of the right hand, soothing them, relaxing them with this warmth and kindness. Now bringing to mind the left shoulder, starting at the neck and slowly moving our attention along the left shoulder, soothing it, mentally massaging it and allowing tension or any strain to dissolve. Now bringing to mind the left arm, starting at the top of the left arm and slowly moving our attention down the left arm all around it to include the elbow, the wrist, hands and fingers of the left hand. Now bringing to mind the back, starting just below the shoulders and moving our attention slowly down the back, giving it a mental mess massage, particularly any hard, stiff or painful areas, giving them more warmth, more kindness, allowing them to relax as much as possible. Now bringing to mind the front of the body, starting just below the shoulders 
and moving our attention gently and kindly down the front of the body to include the chest, the diaphragm, the stomach and the abdomen, giving them this kind, gentle, mental massage. And now bringing to mind the right leg, starting at the top of the right leg and slowly moving our attention down the right leg all around it to include the knee, ankle, the foot and toes of the right foot. Relaxing, soothing, giving this warmth. Now bringing to mind the left leg, starting at the top of the left leg, moving our attention slowly down the left leg all around it to include the knee, ankle, foot and toes of the left foot. And now we can bring to mind the whole body just sitting, just being aware of the present, the body sitting in the present moment with this warm, kind attention.
And now we can bring to mind the gentle inner smile of a Buddha statue we have seen. Or to bring to mind someone's smile which has really touched us, like Ajahn Brahm. Or to bring a smile deliberately to our face, physically to our face. Becoming aware of the inner smile that that can evoke and getting in touch with that feeling of the inner smile, the feeling that that brings up. Maybe a feeling of warmth or joy or contentment, ease or peace, being at home with ourselves. And we can become aware of the breath coming in and going out. And notice where we're most aware of it, wherever that is, whether the nose, throat, chest, abdomen. And we can bring up this feeling of the inner smile and infuse the breath with it as it goes in and as it goes out, infusing it with this warmth, stillness, ease of the inner smile. Breathing in this inner smile and breathing it out to the world. And if the mind wanders off, remember whatever brought up the feeling of the inner smile and where you are most aware of the breath. And breathe in with that inner smile and breathe out with that inner smile. And now I will be silent and we can continue to develop the feeling of the inner smile with the breath.
close to the end of the meditation so we can spread this feeling of the inner smile however uh, you experienced it whether it's warmth, contentment, peace, ease, stillness an offering as a gift out of respect and gratitude to our Dhamma teachers really our spiritual friends or guides and in particular to Ajahn Brahm we offer you this feeling of the inner smile Bhante out of enormous thanks and respect for, for your long life good health and the highest spiritual happiness May you continue to teach and inspire us for a long, long time. Bande. And we can expand the feeling of the inner smile gradually and gently, offering it as a gift to include everyone participating in this guided meditation throughout the world. Wishing that they may be filled with the warmth, joy, ease, contentment and peace of an inner smile. we can expand that feeling of the inner smile further to include all beings living in the area where we are, radiating it gently in ever-widening circles to include all beings in the world and in all realms of existence, whether they're human beings, animals, or unseen beings, all beings wishing that they may be filled with the warmth, joy, security and safety, contentment and peace of an inner smile. And now we can come back to ourselves, focusing on this feeling of the inner smile. And we can reflect for a short time, how do I feel now? Did I feel this feeling of the inner smile or not? And what caused it to arise? And we can have the aspiration or intention to develop this feeling of an inner smile with everything we do, 
to make it a habit and a refuge. And we can anchor that feeling of the inner smile in our hearts and minds. When I ring the bell three times, please come out of meditation if you wish to at this stage. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you.